SCP-1730, what really happened at Site-13? This animation has been requested quite a bit of times for me to react to, and the, the fact of the matter is it's very hard for me to keep up with all the requests that come in. That's not to discourage you to do it, just keep on requesting, I don't mind it. The comments are great to see, and I'll try to keep up as best as I can in the future. Anyway, this one's by SCP Explained. Make sure to go over to their channel and subscribe. Subscribe to me if you like reaction videos, and let's get into this animation. SCP-1730 is one of the biggest threats the Foundation has ever faced. SCP-1730 does not exist. It was okay. June 5th when the compound was first discovered, a large complex of structures in rural Texas, about 15 kilometers northwest of the Mexican border, right. located in Big Bend Ranch State Park. It was easily the biggest structure in the area, but there okay. was no record of any uh, such structure ever being built. All a right, massive so it was a network secret. of power stations, containment facilities, and research buildings, SCP-1730 looked like it had been abandoned for a long time. The well, exterior was, was degraded, but the building was still operating. A power generator had been running for an indeterminate amount of time. Even right. as the infrastructure degraded, power flickered through the site and fuel leaked frequently. Ugh. But there was one <laughs> that detail like that attracted fuel. the attention of SCP Brass. <laughs> SCP-1730 bore identifying markings linking it to Foundation Site-13, a okay. research facility that was marked for construction near Nome, Alaska. But Site-13 so, had never been built, having right. been abandoned in the planning stages. So why is it in the middle of Texas, fully constructed and long abandoned? The Foundation Weird. needed to know more, and they needed did their best yeah. to investigate. <laughs> it was time to call in the game wardens. Apollo 3, the, the mobile task force wardens? used to investigate dangerous ah, sites, was okay. brought in, and five elite agents Basically were briefed and sent in. Ross, Houston, Noah, Ohalo, and Vigo. It didn't take long for them to discover that something was very wrong with the site of SCP-1730. Uh -huh. The facility was located in the middle of South Texas, but the local flora surrounding it was native to Nome, Alaska. Something That's had transported a building weird. that shouldn't exist to another place and time. Commander Ross ordered his men to enter, weird, with Houston man. taking the lead. They discovered that the entry led down a long staircase. They descended slowly, following a strange light that no one could identify, but had a sudden shock when they discovered that the basement of the staircase was missing. The light suddenly stopped, no and it became so dark that it was impossible to see what lay beyond the oh. staircase. Upon probing the inky black void at the base of the staircase, they determined it wasn't a fog or shadow. Oh, gosh. It was a liquid, a liquid. And it was rising. Ross ordered the men to pull back, but Houston was in too deep. Uh -oh. He couldn't break free from the inky black liquid. The men pulled him away and got him free, but his legs were gone. Not oh my god, it there ate was his no legs. Blood anywhere, smoothly cut off as if they were never there. And as they put Houston down, he stood up on phantom legs. He didn't feel any pain, but like everyone a different could tell dimension? something was very wrong with this place. And the messages Bruh. they started seeing on the wall made clear they weren't the only ones who knew it. What happened to Site 13? Death here, not my body, bleed. There had been other people How or things strange. inside SCP-1730, and they wanted anyone who entered to know that this was a very right. dangerous place to be. As they advanced down the this hall back toward weird, the entrance, they bro. saw what looked like a person in the distance. But as they okay. approached, it became clear it wasn't another explorer. It was an old, horribly disfigured corpse seemingly attached to the wall. Not by chains, uh. but fused to the wall in unnatural ways. Oh, At first, the team gosh. seemed unconcerned, recognizing the corpse as someone named Zachary. For Fortunately, command back at the base realized this as the effects of some sort of cognito hazard, a oh, mental no. infection in the base. They uploaded a filter to their helmets, and the team recoiled in horror <gasps> at the sight in front of them. But oh, the horrors no. were just beginning. They turned around to see a shimmering humanoid entity in the hallway behind them. As it approached, its footsteps like distorted the hallway around. It pulled AP3 Noah toward it without touching him. Oh, and as so the reality bender. Its clutches, his body started to distort. Vigo was next, being grabbed by the oh, arm by a no. bandage, and his arm started to change color and distort. But the Foundation sent Apollo 3 and prepared. Houston produced a portable reality anchor designed to handle uh -huh. reality warping entities. There with you a go. flash of red light, the creature was revealed. It was a horribly elongated humanoid that only existed for uh. a second before the reality anchor erased it and restored the hallway to its normal state. Right. Vigo it would recover with the strange red color in his arm fading eventually. Okay. Noah wasn't so lucky. Oh, he was no. already 
dead had been fused into the wall just like the unfortunate corpse. These horrors had been encountered Dang. just by trying to return to the entrance, so it was clear the only smart thing to do was to descend further into the facilities and get some answers. What the advanced, hell? Not encountering After any other that, supernatural uh, entities, they saw more evidence of the away. dark things that had occurred in Site 13. Sure. The infirmary had been torn apart, a cafeteria had been melted into slag, and a large group of containment cells ended with a section called Olympia Class. But while most of the other cells were standard size, so, these like were over 100 breaches. meters high. What had the foundation, or whoever ran this place, been keeping in these cells? They would get more answers as they made their way down the hall, where right. they saw a single television still working and illuminating the hallway. <laughs> like At the first, poltergeist? The television flickered, but the image soon cleared, and the agents were able to see what it was broadcasting. It was the interior of a containment cell, and there was someone in it. Okay. And they recognized them as one of the most An dangerous old beings oh, no. by the SCP Foundation. Bobble, Bobble the, the clown. clown! A predatory supernatural <laughs> yeah. clown that inhabits a children's TV show. Bobble the Clown was broadcast by an unknown source and could only be seen by children under 10. Originally right. seeming to be a normal kid uh, show we about reacted a clown, to that. every it was, episode eventually it was quite evolved crazy. into the murderous Bobble teaching kids how to do horrible things yeah. like arson and torture. The Foundation eventually captured and isolated Bobble's broadcast, but yeah. the clown remained hostile and vicious, but not here. As the team talked to the Bobble trapped in the mysterious Site 13, it became clear Through that this clown was broken by whatever it had experienced. Experience. It oh. rambled, it hid from the camera, and it was clearly terrified as it told the team about the horrors of the site, and it oh seemed to God. recognize the agents as something familiar, but not completely familiar. It okay. claimed to be able to smell them, and it said they smelled different. As Bobble rambled on, the agents Strange. learned about a man named Emerson, who ran the site. Like the Foundation, he was obsessed with containing the strange and dangerous entities in the world, sure. but unlike the Foundation, he didn't just want to protect the world from them, oh, he no. hated them. The entities in Site 13 didn't even have numbers. It's a GOC use them up however <laughs> he could have been a good candidate for the GOC. It's something Bobble called the meat grinder. Entities oh, that no. outlived their usefulness were taken down below and none were ever heard from again. Oh, it was directly God. counter to every SCP Foundation policy, but this site right. had clearly been performing these horrible experiments for years. How? And why hadn't anyone heard of it? Right. The team continued to make their way into the facility, but their signals were lost the as they entered the cryogenic or, like, from an alternate By the time dimension? contact had been restored, they were no longer alone. There were survivors, both agents of the Foundation and survivors of the facility, and they okay. were angry. With no way out and massively outnumbered, they called for backup. Mobile Task Force T5, also known as Samsara, was reserved for the heavy-duty missions. Okay. They're an elite group of practically immortal cyborgs fashioned from the flesh of a god and equipped Ooh, with further what? cybernetic enhancements to eliminate Keter-level threats and to protect themselves from wow. the Keter hazards. They were sent in That's to a, hell of a team. gate to look for survivors and neutralize whatever lay within. They didn't know what to expect, but they right. knew one thing. No one who had been sent in had come out. Sure. It wasn't long before they realized how dangerous this mission would be. As they came across some large gated drainage pipes, they could see at least 20 charred bodies of humanoids pushed oh up against God. the gate, some reaching their hands through. Whatever had happened in Site 13, these unfortunate beings had been desperate to escape. God, as they made their man, way down the drainage pipe, they could feel it getting hotter, as if they were nearing an energy source. Okay. There was one other odd thing about the pipe. It was draining inward, not out. Out. They made their way into a control room okay. where many of the consoles had been destroyed. Looking through a window, their view was obscured by a mysterious black mass. On the control panels, they Maybe could read terms liquid? like incinerator and body pit access. They split up trying body to find answers, but found many of their accesses oh blocked what? by the black mass. As right. the T5 task force argued over their next move, they were startled oh. by a sudden jolt. The giant mass had started moving. The team oh. watched as the mass spun, revealing a giant turbine, which turned the inky substance into a fine slurry that was then scorched by giant streaks of fire. One of the T5 shot open the glass chamber, allowing the team to get closer and blasting them with a wave of heat. As they descended into the chamber, they could see a massive plant-like structure overhead, plant? which started to shake. Suddenly, thousands of glowing pods were released oh, from the massive no. plant, and each one lit up and let the team view the chamber more clearly. Oh. But it was what was inside the pods that was more disturbing. Each pod Corpses? had a humanoid shape inside, oh, like seemingly aliens? reaching toward the team. Oh, dude, this place is nuts. Below, and the shadows went dark. 
The this team place decided to investigate nuts. the slurry. When something started to leak out of the walls, looking at it, they could see something moving within. One of the team members picked up the wriggling object out of the black liquid, and it took a bite of his hand. It was a oh leech, my God. and there were thousands leeches. more of them moving toward the slurry, consuming it. And as the leeches ate, they started growing. They seemed to be moving in unison, communicating oh with a larger God. being lurking at the base of the slurry. A larger leech, a queen, or something else. Oh the team wasn't God. sticking around <laughs> to find out. They beat a hurried escape from the leech room, finding themselves in another hallway. Whatever the black substance was, the entities who had been here had used it, scrawling blood on the walls over and over again. Oh Occasionally, they would come across a drained corpse covered in the black fluid. Had uh -huh. the leeches bled them dry? The facility was so sprawling Gee. that the team knew if they wanted any chance of navigating it safely, they needed to get the lay of the land. They sure. needed to find the control center. The door read stairs to cryonics, and the leeches were cryonics. nowhere to be found. It seemed like a safe path. But as soon as the team entered, the temperature dropped drastically sure. to well below right. where it would be safe for a human to survive. Right. The team's internal heating system kicked in to save their lives, but it wasn't the only threat. The team was about to encounter exactly what Site 13 was keeping locked up. Oh, as soon no. as they entered the room, sound ceased to work. The filters in their gear were overloaded, and the team saw warnings around the room. Silence. Don't look. A massive, multi-limbed figure emerged, with each of its 60 arms moving independently. The what creature the had no hell? head, but a large circular structure covered with ancient glowing symbols. Whatever it was, it was ancient, <laughs> all-powerful, and deadly. The right. team scrambled to get away as the glyphs on the creature like burned white like hot. Anyone who touched it was burned. Anyone who looked too long Egyptian at it felt stuff. their optical implants burn out. Wow. The symbols on the creature were indecipherable, but one word was clear and printed in English. Emerson. Emerson. Site 13 was from another world, another timeline, where the SCP Foundation evolved into something horrible, ruled over by Elliot uh, Emerson. It tortured and captured its Elliot beings, Emerson. and eventually killed most of them in the horrors of the incinerators. When Gee. an escape threatened to destroy the facility, Emerson successfully activated the device that removed the facility from their world into ours. Of I course, see. as any avid follower of the SCP Foundation will know, there's far more to the story than this. Yeah. Emerson may have been the start of Site 13's problems, but he was far from the end. We're talking about a tale so epic in size and scope that it would be impossible to fit into one video. A so tale of no subterranean <laughs> horror, a daring rescue mission into the bowels of Site 13, oh and an anomalous God. battle to end all battles. There's there's another part to this that we're gonna react to, guys. I, I, the the whole the 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 original the the video that was combined was like uh, I think it was close to 40 minutes or whatever. And I'm trying to keep them under that, but we're definitely gonna react to part two of this. I hope y'all really enjoyed it. This is this 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 place is crazy. It's definitely definitely something that I want to find out more about. I hope y'all really enjoyed this one, guys. Make sure to always leave your request in the comments. I I do read them as much as I can, and I appreciate the support that you guys give me we so close to 5,000 thank y'all so much guys listen make sure to subscribe to scp explained as well as these videos that i reacted to from him thanks so much for watching as always this is ojin signing off we'll see you next time